Hi there folks, Simon here with my second game in this 2021 TAC Open Tournament, this time against Alion 02 or Alion 02. As you can see, we're going by those tournament rules set out for this year, which is two Komi, size six by six, tournament game type, that's my opponent, and time limit of 15 minutes with a 15 second increment, meaning I get 15 seconds at the end of every turn. Now, Aliano 2 is a very strong competitor. We can take a look here. He is rated at 1561. He has 36 total games played, which is very low, uh, but he did start back in August and which is two months prior to this, actually two months to the day prior to this match. And he's played quite a few games on the Discord asynchronously. So go ahead and check out the description below for the link to the Discord server where you can play asynchronous games. And those aren't counted towards the rating here. And they're a great way to learn the game and play at your own pace. But he has played a number of those and created a bunch of TAC puzzles that are absolutely amazing. They're incredible tack puzzles, and I've only been able to solve one of them, and that's the one that I showcased on the Tinue video of Tack University, which you can check out on this channel, and the puzzles are awesome. They're really cool. They are very, very difficult to solve, and it's just really fun to see some new blood in here come up with some really great content. And so this will definitely be a very, very difficult match for me. He's a very strong player, especially with all this practice building up all these Tinue puzzles. He's going to be watching for those Tinueys for sure, so I'm going to have to play very smart and really crack down on my strategy here. So let's get started right ahead with game one. And he has accepted the Seek and I am white in this first game. Let's get things going. Oh, he's going for opposite corners. I'm gonna play this Knight's opening, which Fwib has made very popular lately. I think for opposite corners, Knight's opening might not be the strongest. I should probably go for the center anyway, but I'm intrigued to see what he does for this. It looks like it's slowed him a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and take in this direction feel like that's going to be the stronger play here. Build up top. Instead of down below, I feel like that gives me a little bit better because I feel like he's going to play a black flat here and then I can play my flat at E2. If he decides to do something else, play down here, then I can play at F2 and continue uh, my vertical threat. We'll see. He's taking his time on these moves for sure. All right, looks like he has decided to play up there like I was hoping. And now when he plays a capstone over here, maybe, which he may do, although playing a capstone against the wall here is a little risky. You can get that capstone isolated and that is a position you do not want to be in. So if he plays over here, I'm going to play over here at D2 and continue on for this horizontal threat. I feel like playing this Knight's opening definitely made him slow down a little bit and is making him take his time because he's used to, I think, this mirrored opening that I talk about in the openings video of TAC University. And yep, it looks like that is what's happening here. So I'm going to play off to the side and now I'm going to try to bring the action down here. I'm going to make the focus of this game be at the bottom half. So this capstone is out of the game. And let's see if I can make that happen. If I can control the flow of the game and make all the action happen down here, then I think we are going to be golden. He's taking quite a bit of time. You look at here, he's got 14 and a half minutes on the clock, so he's already spent a bit of time there. I'm going to bring that capstone in right here at this spot. It's going to be a central location. I'm not going to be able to be isolated. It is building towards my horizontal road. It's able to cut him off. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty solid capstone placement I think it follows a lot of the guidelines that I've placed in the capstones video of TAC University even. So we'll see how he responds to this one. He could respond by placing down at D1 and eventually trying to make a capture over. 
you could capture initially. All of that is possible. Okay, so he's got that placed now. I actually kind of like his position. I'm going to play here. What this does is it creates a vertical threat that black needs to respond to. <laughs> but it also makes this anchor point off to this side so I can come down and start continuing my horizontal threat. So black may decide to place up here. No, he's going to make the capture. Okay. Unexpected that he would do so so soon. But let's bring this down now. Now, I have momentum here in this horizontal direction. Black does have the beginnings of a horizontal road up here at the top. But again, I have momentum, so he's going to have to play kind of by my game right now until he cuts that off. And he can do that by capturing down with this flat on D3. That would mess up my momentum. Let's see if he does that. If he does, I may decide to ignore that move and play up here. And if I play at F5, that kind of cuts off his anchor point and allows me to make some sort of mini threats in the vertical direction yet again. But he is taking his time. Now, I'm not taking too much time right here in the early game. I know I'm going to need it later on. Okay, he's playing there prematurely. That's actually a really smart move. He can get a road in two moves, but he knows that he can cut off my momentum here. And now I can play a wall up top. Now, I expect black is going to play here at c5 next. He sure does. Now, I'm going to play here at d2. So what I'm doing is I'm building this along. I know that I have at least one turn where I can come down with this white wall and block him. If he decides to play here at b6, I'm going to have to wall here at b5. It's going to be really my only out. But I'm okay with that. Even though he does have two Komi, it's, it's a risky play that I'm going for right now. <coughs> but I think it has the potential to work out. Because if I can play A2 before he does anything down here, I can get Tinue. However, he's going to know that because he is this Tinue puzzle creator. He definitely has the chops to spot that coming from a mile away. So we'll see how that works out. He does decide to play there, so I am going to be forced to play my wall here. Hmm. Let's see what his play on this one is going to be. So he knew that I had to place there, really, that I had to, to wall at this spot in order to stop what he was doing. But it doesn't seem like he had an immediate plan afterwards, which is interesting. But if he doesn't do something down here, I get Tinue with this. So he's got to make some sort of move. Drop a wall or something. I think a wall here at C1 is probably his best bet. Uh, he could also wall here at F2, maybe. Now that wouldn't really work out. He would need to wall at C1 or a wall at A2. Okay. All right, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. 
It's a good, it was a good play to drop a flat here. He wants to keep his flat count high, so he doesn't want to drop a wall. So it was smart to drop a flat there, and that does interrupt what my plan was going to be. I wanted to play there at A2 to get my tenue, but he saw that and stopped it from happening. But if he doesn't do something down here again, I can capture up and have my tenue anyways. So let's see what he is doing here. He's got a number of options. He's probably going to have to drop a wall here on C1. I don't know. He's in a tough spot. He can definitely see that. Let's see the count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, plus 2. That's 11 flats for him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight flats for me. So I am I am behind by three flats. Uh, so when this gets to late game, if it gets there, I'm going to be in trouble for sure. I think he just gave it to me. I don't think that he can win here. I think I think I got the tin away. Because this coming down, I just place here. This going down, I place. This going right, I place. Yeah, so. Woo! Oh, man. That was tough. I was, uh, I was, I was in a bad spot there. I only managed to barely get that tenue off of him. Woo! All right. Okay, now this is where... I'm going to have to be extra careful in this second game against him because he is going to be, number one, he's going to be playing as white, and number two, he is going to be on the lookout for tenues, similar to that. So we will check it out. All right, let's go ahead and put up the seek for game two versus Allian O2. Or a lion, O2. Still don't know how it's pronounced, but. All right, let's see what we can do here. I'm gonna go with the adjacent corners. <sighs> All right, let's see what opening he goes for. Does he go for the center control mirrored opening or something else? If he does, I'm gonna bring out my new trick. I am bringing out my new trick here. This is something I've been trying out lately, and I think that it really is really good for black when you get adjacent corners like this and they go for the center control with this standard mirrored opening thing. I break the mirrored opening and I play on this side. And now he's thinking, okay, this is different. Now I need to take some time and think what is going on here. The reason why I'm playing this is because I can now play over here if he plays at D4 to go for that horizontal line. Now I have momentum by playing at f4 because he doesn't have two in a, in a row for the same road. I have two in a row for the same road and I can complete it. So, so it's, it, I get momentum just barely. It's easily cut off just by him placing it at five, but I think that this little deviation in this opening is pretty nice. And I recently figured this out a couple weeks ago. Uh, I really like it. And so this allows me to kind of go for this edge crawl, which is very popular in fives, not popular in sixes because it's so easy to, to thwart, but <laughs> it's still, it's still not too bad. Uh, Tiltac, the top bot, Tiltac bot, which you can see, hold on, not up. I think uh, he got reset recently. Or he's playing... No, yeah, he got reset recently, so he's not up right now. But Tiltac Bot, one of the top bots, does play a sort of edge crawl, like a semi-edge crawl in sixes, and it's very, very difficult to beat. So it's not completely out. It's just very hard for a human to, to pull off an edge crawl in 6x6. Six six. So we'll see how this variation works. He now knows, after I played here at F4 and F3, that I'm going for this edge crawl... And he's not going to be able to go for this horizontal line. He's going to have to do something. So he's probably thinking about dropping 
A flat or a wall right here to cut me off. If he keeps going, I'm going to keep going here so he can't switch to the horizontal too quickly. Now, I still do have momentum. If he plays up top, I'm going to want to play a flat here. If he plays down here, I'm probably still going to play up here. If he plays down, yeah. There's, there's a number of different ways he can do this. He's probably going to want to block me on this next turn. Not on, not after I place this next one. He's going to want to block now. So he's going to want to play at F1. No, he's playing off to the side so he can capture when he needs to. Smart. Okay, I'm going to play here and fill in. Go for my line. Now I'm going to play at this spot. Now, <laughs> I still have momentum. I lose momentum if he captures up or down with this stack. <laughs> and if he captures up or down with that stack, I think I might drop my capstone next to it. And my reasoning for that is he'll probably move that stack so I can't capture it with the capstone. But if he does that, I can come over here and capture on this line and keep him from building this horizontal, this vertical line that he's going for. So overall, I think that this, this opening move of putting it at C3 instead of the D4 that's expected, I think this is a really strong opening and I'm hesitant to share it in this video because other people will see it <laughs> and know what I'm going for. But I think people will see it anyway and it might get talked about after the game, but you know, sacrifice my own strategies for the good of the game, you know, progressing. See if other people find uh, a, a good way to block this, to turn it on its head, or if this starts to become adopted as the norm, we'll see how openings change. Maybe people will start going to adjacent corners now uh, for, for six by six, we'll see. Things, things can change. Oh, he decides to drop the capstone. All right. I'm gonna capture over. And then now I capture back. Okay, so he is set up to capture here. What do I want? I can place my capstone here, 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 or here. And any of those will be pretty good. I won't be able to win any capture war on this stack. He's got this. He can come down. If I come over, he can come up or back whatever way he wants to. I'm going to drop my capstone here, actually. <clears throat> now, he probably wasn't expecting that. He was expecting it here or here, but I'm bringing it here. And the reason for that is now I can continue to make my threat by placing it E2, cut off his own horizontal line. I can bring this over if he doesn't decide to capture this stack right away and then threaten that. <clears throat> he can't toss this capstone to the left and threaten to capture this because he will create a, a, an opportunity for me to make a road. So I feel like this spot was the best move I could have made right here, this capstone of E4. And I'm hoping it turns out well for me. Uh, it does follow a lot of the rules. Again, like the, uh, not rules, guidelines that I set up in the Capstones video of TAC University. Let's see how he responds here. Again, he's playing, he's taking a lot more time than I am. I have been playing well under that 15 second increment on my average turn time. Excuse me. And he is, he's taking his time, which I think is smart because this is a, very vulnerable position right here. <clears throat> if he does capture, I'm not sure what I'll do. If I just continue to play at E2, or if I bring the capstone down, bring the capstone down might be the best decision there because he could cause some issues for me because if I just play here at E2, he can take this stack of three, drop one, and then bring two over. Okay, and if he does that, 
then I can only liberate one flat and he can make some good flat count. Yeah, I'm gonna bring this down. Give myself a hard capstone, threaten this stack. <coughs> He's definitely going to move this. He's probably going to spread it upwards. I doubt he's going to spread it to the left, though it is it is a possibility. I don't see him doing that, though. I see him spreading up. But I think, yeah, I think moving the capstone down was the good move to make. I think that was the right one. Otherwise, he would have captured a cross on here and, and messed me up with flat count there, and I, I don't want that. Currently, I have one, two, three flats to his four. Uh, I do have a hard capstone here. I'm going to place here. Now, this doesn't do anything for my own threat. Not at all. But it does allow me to capture this at a later point. And if he does come over and capture with any of these, then I can have a bigger stack to use. And you know what? That works for me. I'm going to do this. Now I have this mega capstone <laughs> that is uh, probably going to be a problem for him later on. <laughs> We'll see how it works out. This is also a very risky position for me to be in. Uh, this stack is incredibly strong, very, very strong, but I am still in a precarious position here. And I'm interested to see how it's gonna play out. Because I'm super behind on flats. I have three. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. However, I can change that fairly quickly. And he's going to go for this horizontal line now. Uh, and how do I want to respond to that? So if I place here, and he places here... That's a dual threat. Oh, I don't want to deal with that. I'm going to place here so he can't make that play. I am in a tough spot. I can do a lot of things to mess up whatever he's got going on, but I'm still in a vulnerable position here, and it's very, very precarious. Um, he has a lot of options, and he is definitely controlling the direction that we're going here, and he can kind of force me to make moves that I don't want to make. I can come back on flat count pretty easily with this huge stack and being able to throw it up here and spread across. That is a plus five flat count differential move. And if you're wondering what that is, check out the flat count differential or FCD video in TAC University and that'll explain what those positive flat count differential moves are. Uh, but in this one, spreading out above would give me two extra flats on the board and remove three from him. So plus five, uh, which would be good because I'm currently at four and that would give me nine to his two, four, five, nine to five, which would be good, positive. Uh, he plays here. I play here. I maybe could have captured upwards here with C2. But I'm not sure how good that would be. That might have been the play. That might have actually been the better move here. 
I mean, a wall wouldn't do much for me because I have the hard capstone. Yeah, so I think I think capturing up probably would have been good because then I could capture down. Afterwards, he fills in and not win on the capture war, but force some suboptimal moves for him and open up some positions for myself. But playing here allows me to capture down with e2 in case he decides to make any threats that I can't stop without spreading this one. And I think that's uh, that's a decent move and a decent trade-off here. If he captures over with, with b2, I'm going to have to come down with this capstone stack. And I don't know if I'm going to come down all the way, if I'm going to spread all the way across, or if I'm just going to come down one. Oh, he, he went there. Interesting. Okay, I got to make sure he doesn't have any road threats. Okay, if I play here, I have a threat that he has to cut off. He can cut that off by that move. Ooh, this is a precarious position for me. Definitely risky business, that's for sure. Um, let's play it out and see what we get. <clears throat> so I, there's a potential that he has Tinue here, uh, and I haven't seen it, but I think I'm in a decent position and I think I can stop whatever he throws at me. I don't think there's anything inevitable here. So he's he is now forced to respond to my attack threat. Now, if he responds with F1, with two F1 plus, moving this capstone up here to F3, that's attack threat for him moving to the left. And it cuts off my attack threat. Now, the question is, now if I go up, what does he do? I'm doing that move. Totally different, not what I was expecting or planning myself to make, but I think this is gonna throw him. And it could open some things up for me. This is a very precarious board position <laughs> right now. We are both right on the edge. And that that's what makes this game exciting. This one right here. Because we are both one blender away from getting Tinue. So if I make a blender, he can probably pull off a Tinue somewhere. Or maybe not. He can, he can win if I miss something. But if he makes the blender, I can win. It's, it's very, very close. No Tinue is, I don't think, too close to this but definitely some wins that are very close to this. Uh, so he brings that threat back just by placing down here E1. I'm gonna go ahead and make this capture that we kind of expected was gonna happen all along. <clears throat> now he's likely gonna bring this capstone up here to F4 uh, so he can capture over. Maybe he'll fill in at E3 first, tough to say. If he fills in at E3 first, I'm going to come up here to F5, or E5. And it's not going to make any connection for me, but it is going to give me another opportunity to come over and capture here, or to come back and recapture onto E4 if he comes up for that. And allow me to use this stack in that throw to my advantage. <coughs> Oh, 
Okay, so he makes that move. Not attack threat at this point. I'm going to go ahead and play here e5 like I was planning to do. <clears throat> now, it'll be interesting to see what he does in response to that. Because I am, I'm fine with spreading this upwards. It does give him the opportunity to place here to fill in and go for that horizontal threat. But I'm pretty sure I can stop it if he does do that in the future. No, he's going for the horizontal now. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. In that case, let's do that. <coughs> so him playing up here on C2 on the next turn would have been very hard for me because it would have been attack threat in the vertical and horizontal directions. Very difficult to stop both of those. Uh, potentially impossible. So I am going to, do I want to bring this down or do I want to place another wall? If I bring this down, no, I want to place another wall just to really cut them off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> I am definitely behind in terms of flats. If he can push this game to flats, he will likely win. Unless I can do something fancy. Now he's got attack threat. I'm coming here. That stops his tag threat, which is nice. I like stopping the tag threats. <clears throat> and then when he plays up here, I can come down and make my own threat again. But yeah, very precarious position for me. And he's got some opportunities to, uh, to liberate some captives because I've been creating liabilities all over the place. <clears throat> so we'll see how this plays out. So I have attack threat. He's got to respond to that. He missed it. He missed my threat. Oh, I think he, he had plenty of ways out of there. He just missed the, uh, the spread down that that was still attack threat. He's probably waiting for something else. Because uh, what I was expecting him to do was to move this capstone up. And then I was going to bring this over. He was focusing on this horizontal line for me. Oof, that's rough. That was a that was a fun game. That was really fun. Really, really fun game. Those were those were both really close. Um, I I feel kind of lucky that I got away with that. He missed uh, both of my road threats on both of those games. Uh, just overlooked them. Um, I think he's he's more accustomed, uh, at least recently, to playing asynchronous games and to doing those those tack puzzles. 
so he probably missed those because of that, not used to the time controls. I mean, he was down to five minutes on the, on the clock. I was playing less than 15 seconds. I'm more used to playing these quick games. So, uh, so yeah, he's saying that his intuition told him to go for the, this, this capstone move. But he was like, nah, I need to do this to make my threat. It was, uh, yeah, <laughs> you probably should have done that. It would have been different. But yeah, that was, those were fun. Those were a lot of fun. That is all for today. Thanks for watching. Uh, this was my second game of the 2021 TAC Open Tournament against Alien 02. Great games, a lot of fun. And I'm sure we'll be seeing him play some pretty strong games in uh, this tournament. Anyway, go check out the description below. Check out the Discord, all the different resources that we have to play TAC, find people to play with online. Be sure to join in the next tournament that we have that's gonna be organized if you're not in the current one already. Uh, it'll be announced on the Discord. And until next time, have a great day and happy tacking.